first, let's start with Chef John Slattery, the general manager, head chef, Pabst Bar and Grill. Happy Friday. Happy Friday, Seth. Good to Thanks see you, my friend. Today. It's so funny. Uh, in the beginning of the summer, we had you here with a lot of similar ingredients. Now they're making their way back again because it's harvest season. Yeah, end of the summer. So I was thinking about all the vegetables, and I wanted to make a nice salad, and we're going to do a steak on top of the salad. But here being the end of the summer, the same vegetables that we started with in the beginning, the first ones we could pick, the kales and the Swiss chards and the spinach, are now the ones that are left because somewhere in the middle of the summer, the lettuce came and grew and kept growing and went to seed and is now gone yep. pretty much, unless you have a second planting that should be maybe coming up in the fall. That would be nice. Um, which is great. But So we can focus on reusing some of those other ones that grow through the whole season. Swiss chard is one of the most prolific vegetables of the whole year. And we have that um, right here. It keeps and it's beautiful. Producing and producing, and especially if you grow the, the colored varieties, oh, it makes it really nice. Look at that overhead shot, John. Wow. That looks like a still frame, like a painting. I was going to say, it's like an impressionist painting or something like Excellent. that. Boy, it's beautiful. We have some seared vegetables. We're going to get to that later. But you also have a really neat factoid about these steaks that we have right yes, here. Yes, the steak that we're going to use, the one that I wanted to feature today, is the Delmonico steak. A Delmonico steak is part of the ribeye complex. So okay. it's like prime rib with those big bones and that one big huge roast. Um, on one end of it is the Delmonico steak. Okay. And that is the, the part that's closer to the shoulder of the cow. So which one here is the Delmonico steak? So the Delmonico so steak here is the, this one here. Okay. And it makes the difference between a Delmonico and a regular ribeye uh -huh. is that um, a regular ribeye cut further down throughout the muscle um, ha has a fat, uh, a, a piece of meat along the top mm -hmm. and a line of fat and then a smaller steak on the inside of it. That steak on the inside is like a New York strip. The further you get away from the Delmonico, the more the ribeye becomes almost a New York strip steak. Interesting. Okay. So there's on every cow, there's maybe two Delmonico steaks on each side. So on every huge steer yeah. or he huge cow, there's maybe four good Delmonico steaks that have this three muscle configuration. And this small muscle inside is, is one of the more tender muscles on a cow. People think it's really special. But that's what makes that a Delmonico steak and this just a regular ribeye. I didn't know that. Okay. So what we're going to do today, we're going to put a little rub on the steak. I'll put a little rub on them right now. Okay. And this is going to be featured in our end of summer salad that we're making. In our end of summer salad. So we've got a little bit of uh, smoked paprika, mm -hmm. a little bit of dry mustard, a little bit of cumin. We're going to dry rub that on one side, flip it over, do the same thing on the other side. Now, is this because it's seasoned? You see the different color on the outside or ridge of the steak. Yes. What does that mean? This was because it was the, the very end of the, of the meat that I dry aged because we cut all our own steaks at the restaurant. Gotcha. So when we dry age it, the, out, the outside layer um, gets a little bit of discoloration, but there's nothing wrong with that. That's part huh. of what dry aging the steak does. In the same way, I guess, that cheese has that uh, rind to it. Correct. Correct. Gotcha. Okay. All right. So we're going to let our steak sit, and we're going to put together our dressing. Sounds good. What's our dressing today? The dressing is a delicious fat-free honey mustard that I like to use okay. um, for a lot of things. It's a great dip. It's, it's kind of spicy. People think it has horse rations, but just from using really good mustard. Really? Oh, because that good mustard can knock your socks off. It can. And so to, dump, to bring that down a little bit, we, we've got, we're going to sweeten it, and then we're going to add some other ingredients okay. so, to make it extra healthy. Lay it on us. What do we have? So we've got whole grain Dijon mustard. So that's big and chunky, lots of grains. The grainier, the better. Yeah. And then smooth Dijon mustard. So these are both French style mustards, but their ingredients are uh, mustard a little bit of, and a little bit of wine. So these two together. Those two together. It's also going to act as a huge emulsifier throughout. It's going to really bind the dressing. Right. Well, this dressing is going to be fairly thick anyway. <laughs> I was going to say, yeah. And then we're going to add to it um, about an ounce of cider vinegar. Okay. And then bring along. So here we have the the honey. And that's going to bring back some of the sweetness from the spice. Right, because uh, otherwise it would be really overpowering. So we've got a fair amount of honey in here. And the recipe of which should be online at the end of the show. Yes, absolutely. And, and uh, on the side of our screen right now. Oh, look at that. Isn't that good? And then a little bit of corn syrup just as, a, as an additional carrier. Okay. You could skip that if you don't like corn Now, uh, you said as an additional carrier. What do you mean by that? Um, to help uh, give base to the dressing so that it's not just mustard. Carry other ingredients in, this, in the dressing besides the mustard itself. I get you. Let's everything else do the talking. I'm going to let you whisk that up. And then we're and just going to add some flax seeds. Okay, flax seeds. I see chia seeds and, over there and too. And chia seeds, and that finishes the recipe. The chia seeds are also going to add to the thickness because as the dressing sits, they're going to they're going to expand and make it thicker. Much like a chicha -ch chia pan. Yes. And then we come back, we'll put the salad together and cook the steak. I love it. Thanks so much for coming. This looks absolutely gorgeous. It's a shame that summer has to end, but it gives us this. So it's not that bad. Right. You can get this recipe at mymassappeal.com. Welcome back to Mass Appeal. We are back. Woo! We chef John Slattery, general manager, head chef, Pabst Bar and Grill. But don't set off the smoke alarm, my friend. We didn't. We're good. We now yet. the steak is resting while we finish the rest of the deal here. Okay. All right. So we're going to make the topping that's going to go on top of the steak on top of the salad. In that, we have some beautiful locally grown farm fresh tomatoes here. I love it. Little that, by the way. And then to that, we're going to add some cooked and cooled uh, quinoa. 
Great. Okay. Add some nice grains, some extra protein to this salad, some fiber. I was going to say, it's a varied protein, good stuff. And then we're going to add, um, part of making perfect proteins is when beans and other, other grains get mixed together. So we're going to put some black beans in here. Have you been watching Mass Appeal? We've been talking about that lately. I do this all the time. You're a wealth remember. of knowledge. And then here we have some millet, which again, adding more grains. Now, uncooked millet. Uncooked millet. So it's going to give it a little crunch. A little too. crunch, as well as will these um, sunflower seeds. You know what's nice about that? Those have nutritional values, whereas if you put some croutons in a salad like this, you're not really getting much benefit from Nothing it. Nothing at all, really. No. So, so now I've got those ingredients. And then to carry the flavor profile, I'm going to use a little bit of the same spices that, that I used in the dry rib okay. of, the, of the. So we got the cumin, mm -hmm. the dry mustard, and the smoked paprika. Okay. And so that's going to give us our topping for our salad. And we're going to put, so salad, steak, this on top. Right. And Love then it. in the salad here, we're going to add the, um, some of the farm fresh spinach. Okay. A little bit of the kale, the tender leaves of the kale. And on the bottom, the kale plant produces all the way into the winter, all the way till next year. So you can continue to pick the smaller leaves and use the tender ones and leave those hearty leaves. Some people say that the flavor gets better on those big leaves after the first frost. Really? Well, I was also thinking about that too. If plants attract sunlight, you need those big leaves so the plants can still do their job. Right, too. exactly. So, but you can still, you know, pick off some of those small ones and use them in a nice salad all the way throughout the year. Mm -hmm. The same with the Swiss chard here. So we've got some of the nice tender Swiss chard. I'm also seeing some some leafy, full-on delt spinach. Yeah, that's that New Zealand spinach that people grow. That's a, a evergreen spinach. It grows all throughout the entire season and self-seeds itself. It's amazing. From the very really? beginning of the season to the to winter, you can pick this spinach and it'll just keep growing and growing and growing. Where were you in the spring when I could have planted it? So we've got our nice mix of greens in here. Okay. And then I've got a corn ear that I roasted off because corn is beautiful at this time of year. And, gonna, and you just put it right on the grill, just like that. Yeah, I just wanted to enhance the flavor of the salad a little bit and play with that smoky um, paprika that we had in there. And so what it's going to do, and tell me if I'm wrong, it's going to bring out some of the natural sugars by grilling that. Yes. Gotcha. So it's, you're going to really feel, it's so funny, you kind of set up booby traps in the salad. You're going to feel like it's so much more fat than it is. Right. Well, I do that all the time. I want people to eat and feel fulfilled and eat healthy and not know that they're eating healthy. Yeah. So I like to sneak things in that isn't always noticed. Very cool. And so these peppers, I roasted right here on the grill till they got nice and charred. And then I put them in a mixing bowl with some tinfoil over and you can see that I can just flake off the charred part of the pepper. And this is one of the things with s'mores, you don't want to do this. With peppers, it's okay if you really char them good because you're going to take the char right off. Right. So we're going to use a little bit of this roasted pepper that we created from doing that and okay. put that in the salad as well. This is real easy. And all this stuff right now, you can pick it up at your local farm stand. Uh, you can get it in a farm share, a farmer's market. So many different ways it's available. And we're just going to use a little bit of our, our whole grain honey mustard. Okay. Toss our greens. Then we're going to plate with a steak. There's so many different kinds of protein, as we've seen in this dish. That's really healthy. So we have that. Then we have the steak to top it. And then the second topper that we also made. Oh, and the carrot pieces. Oh, carrots. For color. Yep, we forgot about those. Yeah. Slide those right on there. Toss a couple on for you. Fantastic. Look at that. John, thank you so much. Always a pleasure to have you here. I'm going to let you plate this up. And hey, if you want to stick around and leave it, we can show it off at the end of the show, too. Oh, that is really something. You can find this recipe on mymassappeal.com. Thanks again for having us today. Thank you, man. Enjoy.